um, what he's all about. So let me share my screen and we can start this uh, presentation right now. Here we go. And let me know if you don't hear any audio. I'm trying my best to make this look. How embarrassing. I was a blue collar kid, so uh, growing up, going to all the train car diners and things like that. And uh, uh, I live about 80 feet from Route 66 now. So there's a lot of traffic coming through. There's a lot of diners and uh, memorabilia and all that stuff. And I'm really trying to kind of grab onto that and, and uh, maybe romanticize it and uh, celebrate it a little bit. I think that was beautiful. Hold the lip right there. The first work that I did for the Blue Plate Special Series, which is the, the diner series, were these uh, mold-blown crinkle-cut french fries, which we did here back the first year that, that they opened. Uh, but that was the first sketch on the napkin at the diner that I did, and I been, had been doing it for about a year. And from then it went to 80 pound bacon cheeseburgers, uh, big ketchup plastic squeeze bottles, uh, hot dog, Coney Island hot dogs, Chicago dogs, uh, glasses of Coke, and things like that. I guess when you see the work, it immediately kind of makes you relax and get excited and loosen up a little bit. It's easily accessible, and like I said, it, it's kind of just really celebrating the American spirit and, uh, and kind of everything that we experience every day that maybe some people from other countries don't. They maybe read about or see on TV, and then they get here and just can't believe it, you know? Everything that you do, I believe, is uh, a piece of artwork uh, is uh, a self-portrait. It reflects who you are reflects your personality, uh, kind of everything about you. So this work is really loose and fun, and people can really enjoy it for that aspect. Museum of Glass in Tacoma, I, uh, it kind of fires me up for a couple of months. I can really take this high back home and then spread it around to my students and friends. This is my favorite place to work, period, uh, in the country. And I've been in at least 50 or 60 shops. Because it's about the people. It's about how we interact with each other. And uh, yeah, mostly that. Oh, this is on the ground outside. I just picked it up because you know you guys like to oh, keep this really? place clean, right? Yeah. Come check it out. That's great. I love it. Well, uh, that's great, guys. Thank you so much, John, for giving us that video. Um, sure. John has been creating um, food elements. Stop this background for me in a second. Uh, John has been creating food elements for as long as I've known him, and they bring such a smile to people's faces. John's also doing a limited edition, which we've sold half of. You can kind of see it behind me here, which is the uh, John's uh, cheeseburger with lettuce, tomato, uh, pickles, and uh, something, right, John? Yeah, yeah. That is, that is tomato, bacon, and pickles. It is uh, one of our early ex early offerings on Habitat Limited, which has sold ha half of already, which is great. But I want to turn the show over to John right now. He has a little presentation for us. Uh, John, we take it away. Okay. So walk me through getting on this. I just have to get you guys out of the way. Yeah, click on this uh, share screen button and choose uh, the screen with your presentation. There it is. Sorry, guys. First time for all this stuff. All right, there it is. Let's see what we got. This this is uh okay. There it is. This thing's about 50 years old, so it's gonna take a second. We still haven't seen your seen your screen yet, John. So click the share. Okay, I should hit share. There we go. Yeah, there you go. All right. All right, cool. Okay. So can can we uh are we muted, Aaron, or no? Everybody's muted except for you and me, and anybody can unmute themselves whenever they want. All right. Well, I'll go through this um, fairly quickly. <clears throat> and um, if anybody has any questions during or after, that's perfectly fine. 
Um, I'm going to, this is a kind of a non-traditional, uh, uh, I guess, slideshow, as they used to say. Um, and it, there's, a, there's a lot of inspirational stuff in here. There's some quotes from some people, Hunter Thompson, uh, and some family pictures and, and uh, inspirational shots from traveling. So I'm just going to go through these. And if you guys um, have any questions, you can unmute and ask them while the images are up. Or uh, I love this quote. I think it's great because he's one of my idols. And for him to uh, you know, say this, it's uh, kind of a little feather in the cap, I guess. So this is the shop right behind me. Um, and I will take you through a little tour after this. Uh, this was for uh, Aaron, the theme, the habitat theme for this was the artist's um, vision or the artist's, I can't remember what it was, but this is kind of what it's like inside my head. <laughs> um, it's my mom and me in 73. I still have that little pistol in my sock drawer. There's my mom in high school. My son, Jesse, and my daughter, Samantha. And that's in Connecticut where I grew up. That's just outside of New Haven in Madison. Uh, this shot was taken of Jesse. We try to go there every summer and hang out. It's my wife, Lisa, and this is Another image of where we're going to be walking later. This is part of the whole installation here. Uh, early racing for me, back when I was three. <laughs> and I ended up, as you see, uh, and well, you'll see in a second, being a racer. I was my sister and my father at her recital. Uh, there's my dad in the middle uh, and uh, down low, they built that race bike. So this is kind of how I grew up, this collaborative thing happening with um, just a whole bunch of people coming together to, to get one thing accomplished. And this bike they built and my father raced it. This is 1969, uh, Hamden, Connecticut. There's my dad in 1973. He was the uh, 250 and 350 GP champion in New England at the time, uh, simultaneously. Normal Illinois is where I live at the moment, and I run the glass studio at Illinois State here. I've been here since 2003. There's a shot of the studio, lots of activity. We're sand casting here, as you can see. Um, <clears throat> all the students like little worker bees. And you can see it's a brand new studio, cutting edge, especially the hood system. Uh, <laughs> just a day at work for me. This is from the Tacoma Museum of Glass. John, is that a fire on the ground behind you? Uh, it is. I made a ring of fire. It stood in the <laughs> middle of it. And if you look to the left of the screen, there is a blue swirling cylinder that's starting to come out of the floor to go up this into the ceiling of the cone. The cone's about 100 feet high. And that was a nice little touch. But it was a little warm that day. <laughs> uh, University of Louisville in Kentucky. Uh, Tacoma again. This image is something that I'll show you in a bit. This is the beginning of the Rick Allen collaborative goblet. So that's the stem in the foot eventually. You'll see it in a second. Buster Keaton, huge influence on who I am as a person. I love the guy. I know that most of you know who he is. And here's that famous scene of him where the facade of the house comes down and the attic goes over his body. Um, there's about 3,500 pounds of wood and metal there, and it misses him by about five or six inches on each side of his body. So that's something that really kind of turned me on as a kid and um, kind of st still have that way of living, actually. Klaus Oldenburg laying next to a giant toothpaste tube. There's another Oldenburg. Love this work. BLT, that's about five by five feet made of vinyl. That's myself and my three cousins in Connecticut. Beautiful place to grow up. This is the homestead. My family moved here in the 40s um, from Milford and then upstate New York and uh, Bradford, Pennsylvania, uh, my grandparents were from. So this is uh, 
my early days as a road racer at Daytona. And you can kind of see the work that I make, how I make it, what I do, and then where I came from, it's a, it all meshes. Um, we built this bike in my father's shop. This is me as well, number 87 here on a bike that we built, all vintage uh, Italian bikes. Uh, There's my 55 Ford in front of my house. There's my 52 Chev. So you kind of get an idea of how all this work comes out of me. And I surround myself with this stuff. This is the facade of my studio and I'm right in those windows right now, talking to you. <laughs> 75 Ford van with some special lights on it. That's the hill chuck in the grass right by my cabin. Okay, there's actual glass in this lecture. <laughs> um, and I will only use this cliche story once. This work um, I did at grad school in Champaign, uh, University mm -hmm. of Illinois, and I woke up with this image specifically in black, this copper corset with the wires, in black glass and I don't know why I woke up with this image but I went in that day and I made this piece uh, um, the first piece of this series in black exactly how I saw it in my mind the top section is reminiscent of the Space Needle in um, uh, Seattle and that was definitely due from me driving up I-90 hitting Seattle for the first time going to Pilchuck and seeing that Space Needle um, and the other parts, there's, there's all kinds of themes and layers to this work, but I'll just go through these. These two pieces are actually right next to me. We're going to take a look at them in a couple of minutes. These are five feet tall, uh, made in two parts. Very figurative, like same thing. This is about four and a half feet tall. The lid comes off. That's all done in sections and uh, glued together. A graduate work. Uh, a whiskey tubing and some giant globes. Those are uh, about 20 inches wide and it's a siphon piece. It's another image of it. Wall piece, uh, five blown elements with whiskey and water and some food coloring and more tubing. Um, so I was making all this, that's a still piece that I made. That's four feet tall, 44 inches, I'm sorry. Um, I was doing all this real heavy conceptual work in grad school and then I realized that you could be funny and it's okay because I saw Klaus Oldenburg. So this work is starting to get there. This is my thesis show um, uh, in the Cranert Museum. And I'd made these clear goblets. There's all kinds of layering to this work. And while I show you the images, so there's your scale reference too. <laughs> I have this piece here. This was in the first show with Habitat in 99 uh, at the old Pontiac Gallery. Um, and I had three of these, and one of them's in uh, at the Mad Museum in New York City right now. Um, but I was making goblets, exposed to all these incredible glass people, um, and then I went to to Costco, and I saw a plastic, snapped together serpent goblet, Italian style goblet. It was about five dollars and there's a two-parter that you just snap together and pour the, the drink in it and i was kind of shocked that that had a, a kind of uh, saturated into the american culture the venetian uh mm -hmm. this you know thousands of year, years of tech, technological experience going into this plastic cup at costco just kind of blew me away but there's all kinds of uh layers to this that last piece this is in Wynn resorts in vegas in the barlotta restaurant um, this is more American based stuff, um, uh, more mixed drinks started moving to that direction. And then this show came out of that whole high volume series. <clears throat> this was with uh, Habitat in 2011, September, um, 10 or 11. And it's grown since then. This is a collaborative show with initially 22 artists who designed the stems. And if you look at that piece on the lower left, that rocket ship was the piece that I was making in the image earlier in Tacoma. It, I was um, sitting down at the bench, kind of reaching out. That's the stem there. Um, but there's a Rich Royal on the right, Rick Allen on the left, and that's my piece that's now in the Tacoma Museum of Glass. This is one of the exhibitions uh, from uh, ISU 50 Year in Glass show. If, and in this scene, very quickly, a lot of these pieces are here. There's um, 
uh, the De La Torre brothers, Nick Mount, Martin Yanetsky, uh, Davide, all the way back in the corner, Rich Royal, Rick Allen, Stephen Powell, Laura Donifer. Um, and then the front piece is uh, the first Thurman Statham piece, second piece I made. Davide, what a great, fun show. There's the Rick Allen again, scale reference. Uh, Martin Yanetsky. Uh, Shelly Allen. Muzzolowski Allen. That's a polar teeny. <laughs> we actually remade that one. That thing flew in the exhibition in a day. So I remade it, had her remake the polar bear. Everything's a little bit different, but similar stacked um, parts. Thurman Statham. Fritz Dreisbach. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's down in the Imagine Museum, sold through Hab. That's five feet tall, five foot two. Uh, Powell. I have uh, four of these guys. Uh, just a high volume piece from me. Another one. Oh, that's gonna that's coming up in the Masters auction. This piece for for uh, Aaron. Okay, so here is the diner work. So this is a little joint in Corning called R and M, and they have great burgers and cheap beer. So we definitely go there quite a bit when I'm teaching. Um, some more inspirational shots for this lecture specifically. This is a 1969 Ford van camper, but it's a Cleveland Browns football helmet. Thought it was hysterical, almost ran off the road when I saw it. <laughs> um, this is right down the street on 66 in front of a diner. Rapid City, South Dakota. Hall, Idaho. Uh, Chelsea, New York, and that cigarette is mine. I just dropped it on the sidewalk and did a little experiment to see what people did. And they're New Yorkers, so they either walked over top of it <laughs> or they picked it up. There was no, hey, look at that. They just grabbed it and lifted it up. Uh, Mug and Bun from Indianapolis. Mike's Chili and Ballard by Seattle. A Dick's Deluxe, first fast food hamburger joint in Seattle, 1954. Coney Island, a Louisville Slugger Museum. I had an exhibition there in the back. And there's the piece. Built a little booth, like a, like a um, drive-in kind of thing. Uh, Promanti Brothers in Pittsburgh. I'm sure that people have been there. You're making us hungry. This is great. Oh my God, I know I didn't have any <laughs> breakfast. Uh, this is research and development. Uh, the beer on the left is mine that I made. The one on the right is a real one. So there's your scale reference. All Italian techniques in Calmo technique. Um, Route 66, Welcome Center. I slept there one night on the way back from my workshop. Woke up and said, look at that sign. I need it for the slide lecture. An 88 pound bacon cheeseburger. Oh. A smaller one. That's a little bit larger than the limited edition. Um, and this is that coffee cup, that research and development piece, but it's 16 gallons. Scale reference for you. This is early 2000s here. That's um, eight feet wide by six feet tall by two and a half feet deep. Everything on there was blown glass. The fries, you know, and the salt shakers were blown into a plaster mold, but everything else was free blown. I broke the pipe in half making that Coke glass. Wow. <laughs> Incredible. Diner food at Sam's Cafe. Love the egg. It's great. Yeah, isn't that great? Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, a, just an installation piece. If you look to the left, there's a salad with um, oil and vinegar. If you look closely, you can see the lids. I blew all these parts and combined them with metallic glass and all that craziness. This is the first box of fries that I made. And these are shoestrings. This is in, um, um, the uh, Kefestian bought this, Aaron. This is in the museum in Armenia. Ah, there it is. The Chicago dog, that's La Salle in Ontario is the title of that one. And you guys know what I'm talking about. That, 
everybody from Chicago sees, sees that and they're like, you got it right. But they missed the celery salt. I didn't put it on there and I forgot and nobody <laughs> gets it. So I'm kind of shocked, but that's got everything. And the other side of it has a big pickle laying it down, down against the bun. Yummy. Onion rings. This is, uh, um, Aaron sold this piece at uh, Sofa about six years ago. Uh, taco, mm. giant taco. And of course we know it's orange because it's hot. All the colors were bright, cheddar cheese and sour cream and all kinds of craziness. Okay, so this is a grouping of a lot of different objects that I just call hot stuff. Um, but this is a four foot bank lollipop, blow pop with no gum. Uh, this is another piece I th sold through Habitat, a plate full of goodies. These are the size of car tires. You saw them on the video, the Tacoma video. Uh, three foot long snap on screwdrivers, which we'll see in a second. Uh, this is the rib cage series, which is for me a culmination of all of the techniques that I learned <clears throat> along the way. This is a combination of a lot of stuff I learned at Pilchuck and on the road. But these range from eight inches to four feet tall, and they're considered, I guess, Swedish grawl technique where I make a cup ahead of time, cut it, and then stuff it with a bubble later. So I'll just show you these. And then we're gonna look at a few in my gallery. This is a process shot. Um, Steve Funk in the back there, everybody. He was in the class, 2007. He's poking his head around with his white t-shirt on. So they're kind of plant-like, they're kind of aquatic, they're kind of human rib cage like but I can really just assign anything I want to these because they're formal pieces. Beautiful colors, John. Yeah, thanks. I really, really think about this stuff when I make them. Um, this was at Pittsburgh Glass Center about 10 years ago. That lipstick is rocking. I love that. I have that here. And this, <laughs> if you look at that cigarette, it's got a lipstick stain on the left. That's the glass center in Pittsburgh. Huge space to fill. That's the Hunter S. Thompson breakfast. <laughs> and that too. And that too. <laughs> Great. This piece is here. How big is that pill in that previous picture? Um, it's about the size of a slice of a softball. Wow. I have them behind me. I'll show you. And it could be aspirin. <laughs> uh, this is the beginning of the Do Not Duplicate series, those keys on the floor. Photo sh uh, shoot I did in my 55. And these are the keys. This is the first set. I made an announcement at Pilchuck at lunchtime and said, um, I just need to make an announcement. I lost my keys. So if anybody sees them, let me know. And I had set this up in the quad. So when people came out, they saw it and then they got it. Sofa 08, uh, these are vinyl decals that can be applied to the key fobs. Uh, that's Shirley Glass's piece. That's called Panic, obviously you can see it on the bottom there. That's about 36 inches top to bottom. I'm almost done everybody, I promise. Bentley key. All sandblasted and dremeled. Porsche, all hot worked and glued. Okay, so this is, I believe, the last series, and there's only four images. This is a series I did at the Tacoma Museum of Glass <clears throat> that was a collaboration with the LeMay Car Museum, and they were based on hood ornaments. Um, and they basically they just pulled the plug and said, do what you want to do. So I drew all this stuff out the morning of the, uh, the blow and we made these, um, this is reminiscent of a um, radiator cap from a Model A. But these are huge, they're all three feet wide. Um, wow. Uh, they're gigantic pieces. This is a moto meter and we'll, we can talk about that later if anybody knows what it is. Um, uh, 
another piece, piece based on Oldsmobile taillights. This is, um, this is the best one, I think. It captures a little bit of the Venetian feel, but it's got that mid-50s taillight look and the uh, Pontiac chrome and all that great stuff. Uh, this is a moto meter. So in the old days, there wasn't, uh, there weren't gauges on the cars. So that red line would start to peak up on your radiator cap. And that's what it would look like if you were overheating. So you just pulled over and added water. <laughs> <laughs> wow. uh, there's the food truck, which was at Sofa uh, three years ago and last year as well. Uh, rolling gallery. It's got all the diner work in it. You walk up the stairs and walk out the back. Right, we had that at Pop and Lock too. At the yeah, it was a it was a hit. People loved it. The great thing about this, everybody, is it's a twenty six foot Ford truck, and you walk in and you look at the work, but your the weight of you, your body weight, makes the truck sway a little. So the keys that are hanging up kind of move around, and all the pieces kind of they're animated. And that's it. So I will get rid of this. Uh, unless we want to talk about some stuff, uh, images. I well, let's see. I'm trying to get rid of it here. Okay, so I can exit this. There we go. And then to get you guys back full screen, Aaron. Uh, Aaron. Right. You want to you want to stop sharing your screen. That's okay. Button. You move the button, mouse up. It should be a stop stop sharing button. If you All can, right. I will. Okay. Yeah, I just have you guys in the corner. Uh, now just a small strip oh, in the right corner. I see some I'll, icons up there. But. I'll take it away from you oh, guys. Oh, there you go. About it. All but, right. Uh, I wanted to show uh, John's page on our um, Class 48 page. You can see his new work, his limited edition, the do not duplicate piece, the burgers or the fries. So it's something to check out. And John also has some beautiful um, videos here him standing in fire, the video we watched, as well as a video of him making the burgers. I'm gonna kick back to John now. We can take a tour. If you double click on, I believe if you watch John's frame, you can give us a studio tour. Oh um, yeah. Figure this out. So I'm gonna see if I can max, figure a way to maximize his screen for everybody, but uh, make host. Yes. So John Miller is now the host. You are the host now, it says. <laughs> right. So I think right. I'm not sure how to make his screen larger as we as we go through this, but I should have figured that out earlier. If anybody can take like their mouse and go over to John's screen. Hi, everybody. Hi. There's dots that'll show up and you'll be able to click. It'll say chat or pin video. You can pin the video and it should hold his video there so it doesn't switch back and forth through people talking. Just gotcha. So you. you want to find the pin video app to make John's screen bigger for his little tour he's going to give us right now. So take a minute to figure that out. Or if you can stare at his, his face mixed with ours. It's up to you. Um, and uh, you got, Aaron, you guys are okay on your end for me able to be able to walk around with yep. and see, yep. full, see full screen? Okay. Yes, please. Show us your okay. screen. Well, we can do that. We got lots of goodies in here. I'm going to flip around so you can see the shop. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm right here. So we'll just go ahead and start here with the parts for the limited edition. Um, they are in pieces now. And there's all kinds of goodies around here. So this, everybody, hopefully you can hear me. Yep, Aaron, we can hear you. Yep, we can all hear you. Excellent. Um, you. This was an Oldsmobile dealership in 1926. So you can see these beautiful floors down here are made to hold automobiles. But I'll give you a little tour. This is... Um, some of the corset pieces that I showed you and you kind of get a scale reference. Now here's a stool. So you have a reference and we'll walk through and do a little tour. There's the Paul Nelson gathering cup with a Lino face. Can you see that face? Yeah, definitely see it. That was sculpted in clay. Paul Nelson did that for the first exhibition. Boyd Sagiki, Lisa Zerkowitz gathering piece. Donifer. Can mm -hmm. we see it in full, Aaron? Yeah, you can see it in full. It looks great. Uh, Rick Allen. Rick Allen, yeah. This is the second Rick Allen. Has anybody ever drank out of one of these cups yet? Oh, I have. <laughs> <laughs> That's my That's punch good. bowl for Halloween. Ah. Um, and then this, Aaron, we've talked about, but this is a 74 Sportster. This will be a glass motorcycle in the next two years. 
So John's uh, taking every part of that motorcycle and taking it apart and then making it out of glass to reassemble on a full glass motorcycle in his own style. Yeah, it's using the frame and the wheels and then the, the engine will be all mold, uh, molded in rubber molds and then waxes will be made and then castings and stuff will be made. So, so John, why did you pick the 74 sports turn? Um, it was one that had the look that I wanted <laughs> and I really wanted the old school engine the iron heads um, because of the nostalgic aspect of it and I wanted a rigid frame uh, because I thought everything would it I, I love that 60s 70s feel um, and uh, I just thought um, artistically it would really translate well so blown headlight the, the, all of the cables that you see will be all uh, bendable cane um, the radiator that you see there will be pushed into hot glass so we'll get that same thin look but it's an exciting, uh, exciting project. It's going to take me a few years. Yeah. Here's my 53 AMI. Fits perfectly in here. And then some work from the Blue Plate Special Series. These are the um, thick cut series. Bags of chips. Barbecue. Um, a giant box of fries. And then a little bit of everything. Here's our little Chicago dog with the pepperoni on the top. Oh yeah. Mustard. I just got this last week. 62 Vendo machine. Great. Does yeah. it turn on? And yes. Nice. Um, this is the first, this is the number one prototype for the uh, next limited edition piece. This will go with the burger. So proportionally it works. The, the corn dog is giant. It's about three feet tall. But the, the Coke glass goes with the burger that I made. So that's the number one prototype for our next launching. And then we'll take a little walk in here. Um, here's my entryway with some work. Um, this will be the third piece of the limited series, but much smaller. Um, it'll probably be white with red stripes. Not sure yet, but we're gonna photograph a new piece and get all those out. Okay. Here's one of my glass paintings, and I'll talk about that in a second. We're gonna walk through the small gallery here. Is that view okay, everybody? Everybody's Good? doing great, yep. Excellent. So on the left are two giant paintings uh, that I did um, three, four years ago, and they're blown glass elements that I break off the pipe, fill with latex paint, and then I run up a ladder with gloves on and smash them onto these plywood surfaces. So wow. if if you look closely, you can see there's some burning going on and some of the glass was left in uh, the paint. And believe it or not, we get some fuming on the glass from the paint burning. So luckily it's all done under the hood system. <laughs> How uh, tall are those? They're four by eights. That's a big. Yeah. So they're really, really fun pieces. It was just a nice pr side project for me to do. Um, at the time. Here are the, some of the gathering pieces. Uh, two mini Thurman Statums. Those are 14 and 17 inches. What? Duncan McClellan, Rich Royal, um, the uh, De La Torre brothers. Uh, there's a Powell, another Thurman Statum. And then this is a Bob Carlson. And I want you guys to look closely at this paintwork on here. Wow. See that? Stack of cards. It's all reverse painted. So he does the inside and then he paints over the exterior to cover up. So there's an um, inner and an outer. I'll just back up some high volume pieces over here. That's the blue one that's going to be in the master's auction. Um, wine glass back there. And then here are some of the rib cage pieces. Can you guys see that okay? Oh, yeah, definitely can. Okay. Those are beautiful. Yeah. I. I really try to use explosive colors, but not too, too much. Um, and these, these are 33 inches to about 13. And the nice thing about these is I'll try to give you a backlit view. They change when they're backlit. They really, really glow. This red piece, on the right with a yellow lift, that's gonna be in the master's auction as well. 
And that thing, the image of it that I took is just, it just screams. Um, there's that giant goblet um, uh, from the first Habitat exhibition in 99 that I had with them. There's a donut burger on the floor. That thing's right. about 80 pounds. Oh. <laughs> um, let's see. There's a Gene Koss goblet from New Orleans. What? Is that, that's a Gene Koss goblet? What's that? That's a Gene Koss goblet? That's incredible. Oh, hi, Corey. Yeah. This, this is a wood glass casting stem that he mm -hmm. made at Pilchuck. Okay. And uh, I asked to be part of the show. Um, this is from 2009. Um, and here are some uh, of the hot stuff pieces on the floor here. So Aaron, here's the size of your pill. All right, gotcha. That is a, <laughs> that is a big softball, you're right. Right. Um, and then little bits and pieces of things around here. Um, and my little dedication wall, of course. Um, you got I the, held uh, Fritz with that piece. Um, that he did that goblet that right. ended up uh, the 30th anniversary goblet. Do you have um, the uh, the poster we made somewhere for the goblet show hidden away? I do. I have it right here. Ah, yeah, it is. Yep. Good, good. Yeah. And here's so this has the original 17 on it. Um, you know, there's Petrovic and uh, Scott Darlington, Donifer, Martin Blank, uh, just a lot of fantastic <laughs> people. Powell. Uh, Rich Royal, Randy Walker, there's a Karen Willenbrink. A lot of these pieces I still have, but half of them I've sold. So, um, so yeah, anyway, that's kind of the tour. I'll just show you the back room so you can really see this place. Here's my drag bike. So look at this place, 6,000 square feet. Wow. So I'll go plant some inventory. I'll go plant, um, oh yeah, there you go. Does anybody know what these old plates were made of, 1945? Not metal. <laughs> They're made of soy. Oh, really? Yeah, because of the war effort. Very cool. So thanks for joining me. Anybody have any questions about anything? This is great. Can, I, can, you, can you show us the uh, little uh, future cup again with the ice in it? I'd like to see it one more time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Can yeah, so this, guys, is a... An Italian style, let's see if I can, yeah, there we go. It's full of ice, right? So it's full of glass ice cubes, but this technique is an Italian technique where you take a brown bubble and a clear bubble, connect them hot, and then shape it afterwards. And then this is a straw that I pull about 30 feet of, break it up and then clean the ends up. But you know, you can do cherry Cokes, you can do orange, uh, soda, anything. And then um, you guys have seen the, the cocktail glasses, I put limes and lemons and stuff on some of the iced tea cups and things like that. So yeah. All so that ice, all that ice is just is just sitting in there, right? Or all yeah. So it's all the work is modular. So you really just set it up the way that you want to set it up. Um, you can change it and do anything you want um, with it. Um, I'm I you can't really lay it on its side because the liquid doesn't move, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I actually have uh, quite a few um, of these in Calmo pieces. I have milk. Um, I have um, uh, margaritas. Here's a milk glass next to this donut. Oh, gotcha. Here's a coffee cup that doesn't have anything in it at the moment. But um, yeah, so Modular. have a good Modular. time here. Um, these are the It's Good For You series pieces. <laughs> and really great demonstration work. Um, they're fantastic. Oh yes, and here's the brand that Aaron and I got together for the new Miller Burgers. The boxing, yeah, the branding's great. Yeah, yeah, nice job, buddy. Thank you, man, it's all you. It's great. Thank it's always you. nice to work collaborative, collaboratively. I think it just makes you grow as a person and artist. Gotcha. Well, anybody's welcome to unmute themselves now and ask uh, John any questions. He gave us uh, a great uh, tour. I appreciate that, my friend. And uh, sure. really have a great grasp on what your, what your, what your space is like and what you're like. So thank you again. All the same thing. <laughs> John, over the over the years, we worked on a lot of commissions together, and, and uh, there was a lot of uh, fun things that came out of those commissions. What was, um, let's say, the most uh, 
unusual or interesting uh, commission that you have had over the years? You know what it is. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. Uh, Corey, Corey comes up to me and says, do you think you can make a $10,000 salad? I said, yeah, of course. <laughs> and it was uh, for a client. Um, this has got to be a good 15 years ago now. Um, it's for a client who um, owned a salad dressing company and um, each piece I made 75 pieces for this salad um, were all needed to be glued together and I said okay <laughs> so because usually I can fit them together stack everything so the weight of the objects will hold the whole grouping together but this had lettuce onions uh, hard-boiled eggs cheddar cheese tomatoes everything it was really fun and once again you learn from all these projects um that was one i gosh you know there's been so many it's hard to even remember it's kind of like a blur Corey. you might be able to rem remind me of some well, i'm just i mean i you know over the years it's like a you know, set of keys one time you had to do these, these these unusual set of keys for somebody that had each vehicle and they collected cars and then yep. there's just so many over the years and you know, we've had so much fun doing these different commissions that, and I just kind of wanted to let everyone know that that process is fun. It's, it's you're an artist that works with the client and you mm -hmm. do it easily and seamlessly and it's a fun experience. It's not difficult and it's, it allows the, the um, you know, the, the client to, to really connect with you as a person as well as add a piece of them into that project. I, I would agree, and that's a good point. And I, I, I feel like because of who I am and how I do things and how I kind of carry myself that I, I love collaborating with people in that situation, with collectors who say, well, you know, what about this? And I will think about it and, and apply it. And it's just, it's not, I think some people take it as an insult and I never do. I just think it's a, a great collaborative you know, thing that happens. And, and then, you know, sometimes people will make suggestions that kind of shoot me off into some direction for some uh, uh, new body of work, you know, it happens all the time. Thank you, Corey. Anybody have any questions? Yeah, like you were sticking with like collaboration and your thing and um, talking about the goblet series that you did, because I always find that so fascinating. And when I first started with the gallery almost six years ago, five and a half years ago now, I was seeing a lot of the images of your work when I first introduced myself to the gallery and the world and stuff like that. And I was really, really just blown away by an artist being able to collaborate with other artists and make that body of work. But like, what was the most important thing that you learned from doing the same sort of style of pieces, but in each different collaboration of all these other artists well, their style. Most of it really is just a chance to get together with these wonderful people and everything that goes with that. Conversations about food or traveling or whatever and then all of this this big snowball starts to happen and then the work happens. So uh, I think I, I learned some technical stuff. Um, really it was about being able to hang out with these fantastic people and just you know like smash our brains together and start to solve some problems um and then you know the the work is uh people love it they they sometimes they laugh sometimes they they're serious about it it depends on the artist and that's the best thing about this is you not everybody's like me trying to make people crack up all the time you know people are very serious about their work so it was all these different um i guess levels um and types of people um so I, yeah i think i and, and one of the things i learned from kurt brock was to never you never feel like you're there you're like i made it it's never like that it's it's a constant learning thing and and you apply everything that you learn and just keep going i, I don't feel like i think if you, you're shutting the door if you uh, kind of stop learning I don't know if a whole lot of people know this, but uh, you, the, during uh, John Miller's The Gathering, which is where he collaborated with all these different artists, he actually had to go hunt them down. It, it's not like the people were sending in work. He had to go in his vehicle, drive across the country uh, to have a little meeting where he had literally one week 
to make a particular piece on their time. <laughs> and, and then he had to drive all the way back to the other side of the country where he had like, I don't know, a couple days to work on another piece. And he worked really hard traveling throughout the world, contacting these people and connecting with them. And as we know, you know, working with a multitude of different artists, they all have different personalities. And uh, I'm sure that it was, you know, sounds like it's fun, I imagine, but also quite, uh, quite difficult and strenuous. But I mean, what has occurred is something that has never happened in history. It's the largest collaboration with uh, the largest amount of artists that has ever happened, not just amongst glass artists, but amongst artists throughout the world. And uh, so it's a really remarkable situation that John had uh, put together and accomplished uh, in his career. It does run through, if you, if you trace my life back, I grew up on the race circuit with my father. So he'd come get me at midnight and we would get on the road, drive for three or four or five hours to a racetrack and, uh, and then race all weekend. Or we you know when I was older, I did, but it's the same kind of thing. It's all about uh, that kind of high and uh, physically pushing yourself and uh and i that's how i make my work and and it's just this really great kind of interaction that happens with people all over the place you know um i i absolutely love it i love it um and and in this this series will just go until i'm not around anymore so um, um i'm running a little low on power i have uh um getting low on my battery but i'm gonna hopefully get a charger here um in a sec I, I had it at a hundred. Oh, I just got to find the keys, huh? <laughs> Here, hold on one second. No, that's good. Glad that you, you said that, Corey, because that was one of the things I was thinking about with that collaboration series, all those other artists is, you know, did he go to them? Did, were they able to meet together in the same space? And it's impressive that he was able to go to all of their places to get with them. In order to get from A to B, I mean, yeah. it was remarkable because of you know how he stopped in Detroit. We were like a, a, just a pit stop, and he'd be on fumes because I mean both his vehicle and him. You know it. You know it well. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I did thirty thousand miles that summer, traveling uh, yeah. to Boston to Kentucky. Uh, I drove to Washington State to make pieces. I drove to Penland, and it was literally get out, walk into the hot. Oh, looks like we lost our host due, uh, due to his laptop dying. So I must I must thank everybody for joining us today, and uh, I appreciate your time. And uh, I'm sure I'll speak to John more, but I, I'll tell him all we are grateful for his uh, his uh, he's calling me right now on my cell phone. His purpose participation. So, thank you everybody for joining me. I'll tell John that he, we all enjoyed it. And uh, if you have any questions, contact me anytime. I'm going to put them on speaker. John, you can say uh, goodbye to everybody. Eight minutes. <laughs> what was that? I was out of. Hold on. My battery just went. So okay. My wife's on, on her way home. I'm only four minutes away, so she's on her, on her way home to grab a battery. <laughs> Hey, don't apologize. We enjoyed it, John. We appreciate oh. appreciated your time, and uh, we really enjoyed um, everything. So, if anybody everybody has any questions, contact me or uh, any time, and uh, we'll contact John and get him back on the pipe. But thank you all for joining us today on our Habitat Now on Saturday at noon. We should be around this time every week, so we look forward to seeing everybody um, and participating. We're planning events every week, and if you have any fun ideas, we're open for them too. But thank you, everybody, and I uh, uh, hope to see you all real soon and once we get through this. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, Aaron. Welcome, guys. Both, both of you Bye -bye. and Sam, too. Hi, Hi Thank you, Corey. Bye. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye.